Okay, so for everyone that's in the session so far, can you hear me? Just uh, answer in the chat, please. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so according to my clock, it's about uh, 1215, which is the start time of this session. Before I get into my talk, I just like to make a few announcements. Uh, so questions and answers, please type them into the chat box. And uh, Gandhi Rajan is going to be moderating this talk. So he will review the questions and comments and uh, hopefully I finish within half an hour and then we'll get to the questions. So this talk might be kind of a whirlwind. I've got a lot to go over and uh, I hope that it's not too fast and confusing for anyone. Another thing to note is that these presentations are all recorded and you should be able to look them up afterwards on YouTube or perhaps some other platform. I will also be putting these slides on uh, the CTEX website so that you can view them later on. Okay, all that being said, here we go. I'm going to talk about the first principles of not so much NLP or natural language processing, but what CTEX does with it. And after that, I'm going to go through some very simple customization, basically some code that you can write for a simple pipeline and put it together and run it. Okay, so uh, CTEX is a natural language processing system. It extracts information from electronic medical record, clinical text, top level open source project, and it has a pretty large uh, user base all over the globe. Okay, so it has a lot of key features. These are also listed on the CTEX website. Uh, the last slide in this presentation is a series of links to uh, mail groups and the CTEX website. So uh, you'll be able to see those later on. Okay, so we're going to go through a sample pipeline. And this is not the only pipeline that you can run with CTEX. CTEX is extremely versatile and I'll Talk about that a little later. So we've got some text. It's very simple. The patient underwent a CT scan in April, which did not reveal lesions in his liver. This is our basic pipeline, perhaps not so basic. Uh, don't worry if this is a lot in one screen. I'm going to go through it bit by bit. OK, so we have boundary detection. Uh, and basically, right now, it's saying that this is all within a sentence, perhaps some other boundaries like a section. Tokenization, so it separates, in this case, all the words, and you can see at the end, uh, the period is actually a token of its own. Normalization, so here, some words actually have a normalized form. Underwent is undergo, did is do, et cetera. And part of speech tagging, basically this is going to indicate what part of speech uh, in English each token belongs to. So we have all that done. And the next part is using all the things that were put together from those components, we can 
recognize entities. So in this sense, we can recognize the CT scan as a procedure, a lesion as a disease disorder, and the liver as an anatomical site. Now you'll notice at the bottom of these peach colored boxes, it says UMLS ID. Uh, this is a CUI, it's a normalized ID, a unique identifier uh, that belongs to clinical events and um, anatomical sites. I will repeat this a little bit later. Okay, so the next thing we can do is chunk, and this is basically putting together different parts of speech into chunks, constituency parsing. Uh, it splits out a tree of all these things. Dependency parsing, much the same, and uh, semantic role labeling. Again, I'm not going to get into the actual NLP components too much. So all of these things make it possible to get entity properties. For instance, the CT scan we can see is not negated and its subject is the patient. However, the lesions, again, if you look at the sentence, the CT scan did not reveal lesions. So the lesion was negated and again, the patient. Okay, we can also get UMLS relations. I will tell you what the UMLS is later. <laughs> For instance, in this case, we're getting the location of the lesions being at the liver. Okay, we can also get events and temporal expressions. In this case, CT scan is an event, April a temporal expression, reveal and lesions to more events. We can get relations between these events and times. For instance, April contains the CT scan and the CT scan contains at the same time lesions. Co-references are basically when you say something in the sentence or document refers to the same single real world object. In this case, the patient is the same as his. Okay, all of this in CTEX is put into a clinical element type system, uh, which in Java is implemented through a series of classes. You can see we have a series of kind of higher level uh, attributes that belong to the clinical elements. And notice each one has in bold an associated code. This is the CUI, again, a normalized unique identifier. So CTEX is built upon Apache UEMA, which is the Unstructured Information Management for Applications. Uh, it's for software systems that analyze large volumes of unstructured information to discover knowledge. That's a mouthful, but it is perfect for NLP. And basically the idea is you build a pipeline. Everything runs in a pipeline. Pipeline is ordered components to perform the work. Uh, and basically a pipeline consists of a collection reader, which obtains notes from various sources. These can be files, databases, a REST entry point. The pipeline also has one or more annotation engines, which you know detect and modify your information of interest and at least one writer to store information wherever you like okay continuing with uema the jcas or java common analysis system is your basic data container which persists information throughout the pipeline this information is what is passed from the collection reader to each annotator to the writers. So an annotation, I've kind of mentioned entities, events, you know, what have you. Annotations are in UEMA and the CTAX type system, simple data elements like words and numbers, um, punctuation, etc. Identified annotation, these are the more advanced elements and include the clinical events. 
uh, for instance, the procedures, disease disorders, et cetera. The CUI, okay, the concept unique identifier. Every clinical event and anatomical site has one. They come from the Unified Medical Language System or UMLS. The UMLS is basically comprised of multiple medical clinical vocabularies. For instance, uh, SNOMED CT, RX Norm, Low Inc. All of these vocabularies have contributed synonyms to the UMLS. What UMLS does is it combines these synonyms and normalizes them with a CUI. So here we can see that C2139817 is a normalized unique identifier for all of the synonyms below CT above left upper limb, CT of left arm, CT of left upper extremity. Okay, so now let's get to some code. And before that, let me check on the time. All right. We're good. So again, a pipeline is, consists of the collection reader, one or more annotation engines, and zero or more writers. So we are actually going to look at, and if you will, create a collection reader that reads from files and modifies the content of the file to something that is more akin to a clinical document. We're going to create a regular expression annotation engine, a simple file writer that will spit out some uh, information of interest. And then we're going to see how a pipeline is created to tie them all together. Okay, so the collection reader, <clears throat> again, it creates a document for processing, reads data from wherever, and is written in Java. So to the right, I have basically a document as it would exist in a file. Now, this could come from a very strange EMR system, who knows. But at the left of each line is some kind of identifier for the contents of the line. And this includes text. Now for NLP, we probably are not interested in the type of the template, the encounter name, patient name, provider. We may, but let's pretend that in this case, we do not. We are just interested in the contents of the clinical document, which consists of the clinical history and the line, this is a 50 year old perimenopausal female, et cetera. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a collection reader. And this is going to basically strip out every line that does not start with text. And with the lines that start with text, it's going to strip out the word text. So at the top, the very first line of code, we're going to call this the ApacheCon demo reader. And it extends a class in C tapes names the abstract file tree reader. On the right, I've written the abstract file tree reader handles most of the work. Okay, good enough. So now we only need to implement one method in the abstract file tree reader. And that is the method named read file. Read file is going to be given the JCAS, which as you remember, is the data container that is passed through the CTAKES pipeline. Read file is also passed a file, uh, which is a file. All right. So next, we have the string document text. We This is what we want to build up by reading the file. Now, if you know Java, the next several lines should be obvious. If you don't, no worries, I will try to make it clear. So we have a stream of text, and that comes from reading the file using a method named lines. So files, lines, and you stick in the file path. So this will build up the document text using the text stream. We're going to filter 
out the lines that start with text. We're going to map uh, or basically change the contents of those lines into the substring five characters into the line and trim it. Basically, that means we're taking out the word text. And then we're going to collect it all into one document with new line characters at the end. Okay, so now we're going to get a JCAS builder. A JCAS builder is another class in CTAKES. And basically, this is going to make our JCAS easy to populate. The JCAS that was passed into read file is basically empty at this point. But the JCAS builder is going to uh, basically do a lot of things for you, such as enter the document ID and things like that. And then we can manually, as you see below, set the document text to the document text that we've built up. Then we call populate the JCAS and we're done. So what we've done so far is we've taken on the left this file and its contents, and we've changed it into internal text for processing that we've stuck into the JCAS. OK, an analysis engine. We're going to build this next. It processes document text. It can create and manipulate annotations. And like most things in CTEX, it's written in Java. OK. So we're going to make a class named ApacheCon Demo Engine. And this one extends JCAS Implementer Annotator Implement Base. Uh, just like the Abstract File Tree Reader, this class in CTAKES is going to do a lot of the work for us. We only need to implement one method named process. That method is given the JCAS. As you recall, the JCAS contains all the data that's passed through the pipeline. So we want to build annotations, and we're going to use the Identified Annotation Builder, <clears throat> another class in CTEX that just makes things easy. So this builder, we're going to indicate that we want procedures. So we're going to say we want the semantic group procedure. <clears throat> And for this case, we're going to be discovering by regular expression just one type of concept. And that concept, we're going to give the concept unique identifier AC123. Next, we're going to use the regular expression span finder. OK. And we're going to give it the regular expression, very simple, biopsy. The next lines are we tell the finder to find spans using the document text in the jcas for each of these spans we go back to the builder which as above is indicated the identified annotation builder we tell the builder this is a span now build the identified annotation and stick it in the jcas pretty easy okay so now We've got on the left, the clinical document that was in the JCAS. And on the right, we've actually identified an annotation biopsy. We've given it the semantic group procedure and the unique identifier AC123. Well, that was pretty simple, but it doesn't do much for us. So let's make the regular expression modifiable. All right, so we're going to use something called the configuration parameter, which comes from CTAKES or uh, in reality, something that CTAKES uses in its framework called UEMA fit. So each configuration parameter has a name. We're going to call this one regex. We can give it a description and a default value. Default value, we're going to say biopsy, just like we had previously. And we put this value of the configuration parameter into regex. The next configuration parameter, we're going to call regex CUI. And we're going to give it a default value that we used previously for biopsy. We're going to call this, in the code, a parameter named regex CUI. OK, so I will show you what this does in the pipeline in a moment. But basically, we're just going to take this 
process method that we had implemented previously. And we throw in as the CUI that we're going to set, regex CUI. We're going to tell the regex span finder to, to find what we put into the regex, and the rest is the same. So now, on the left, we have a clinical document. And on the right, we're going to look for diagnostic imaging and MRIs. And we're going to assign those the CUI AC456. We're also going to keep looking for biopsy. OK, so a writer. Uh, we can output the process data. You can print it into a log, save it to file, put it in a database, et cetera. Basically, anything you have access to, and this goes for the collection reader too, anything from which you can read data or write data, you can write one of these collection readers or writers to use it. As previously, this is written in Java. Okay, so our writer is going to we're going to call it Apache Con Demo Writer, and it extends Abstract JCAS File Writer, another thing that sits in CTIX, does most of the work. We implement one method named Write File. I know these methods have strange names, but you know we try to keep it simple. Into Write File, you pass the JCAS, and an output directory, document ID, file name. Again, that is done for you. All you have to do is implement the method. So we're going to say, okay, we're going to make a new file to which we're going to write the information. Let's just make it out of the output directory, the file name, and we'll throw in Apache text. So we're going to create a writer similar to what you would do in Java. Again, if you are familiar with Java, this is, you know, old hat. If not, it should look pretty simple. Now we're going to get some node specs. Node specs are a class in CTIX, and basically they make using metadata on the actual document itself, not annotations and so forth, but the actual document. Very easy. Node specs is built out of the JCAS. So we're going to write the document ID, we're going to write the document type, and actually a patient name or ID. Those are obtained from note specs. OK, next we want to write the actual identified information. So we're going to use event mention. Event mention is a more specific type of identified annotation, and it includes things such as procedures. So we're going to get this from JCAS util and select these event mentions from the JCAS. This is another thing that we inherit from UEMFIT. And then we're going to write with a writer using the identified annotation util, again, something that comes with CTAPES, the best semantic group from that event and its name. And we're going to join all of the CUIs for that identified annotation or event. And then we're going to just spit out the text of the event. OK, so the writer, we have this information that we identified on the left within the clinical document. And then we're going to create a file that, again, lists document ID, type, patient ID, and the procedures that we identified. OK, so a pipeline. Pipeline is a set of collection readers. You can specify annotation engines and writers. And importantly, you have to order these components as you want them to be executed. And it is written at, at least sometimes in what is called a Piper file. OK, Piper file is pretty simple. You can set a reader. And our reader is the ApacheCon demo reader. You can add an annotation engine. Here, we're going to add ApacheCon demo engine. And we're not going to give it any parameters. As you remember, if you don't enter a parameter, the default is biopsy. 
So now we're going to add the Apache Con demo engine again, but this time we're going to say we've got a regex GUI as AC456, and the regular expression is either diagnostic imaging or the text MRI. And then we just add our Apache Con demo writer. The syntax of these Piper files is really pretty simple. So what this does is it runs the whole thing through. We've got our original document on the left or file, and then we've got the formatted output on the right. Okay, so I hope all of that made sense. Uh, and some useful classes, as I showed you previously, there are a lot of classes in CTAKES that do a lot of work for you. And they make implementation of you know, these methods that are specialized to your pipeline very easy. So the JCAS util, again, this is from UMAFIT, and it will fetch annotations from JCAS. The JCAS builder, this is what you're going to put in a reader usually. It creates and populates a JCAS. Source metadata util is a more advanced version of the note specs that we used, and you can use this to fetch metadata. The configuration parameter, I showed you that earlier. It's very powerful. Uh, and anytime you start to write advanced annotation engines, you will end up using this. The identified annotation builder, that is, I think, the easiest way to build an identified annotation in CTEX. The ontology concept util will fetch annotations and concept information from the JCAS. There are a lot of methods in this class. Uh, again, if you start writing uh, annotation engines, you will probably end up using this. The identified annotation util fetch annotation attributes. This makes it a lot easier than going through the type system that I showed you before and trying to figure out what method uh, gets you information for or from an identified annotation. Semantic TUI, there are uh, TUIs and groups that are kind of confusing if you step into CTAKES without any knowledge of the UMLS and semantics. This class and another class semantic group, they make it pretty obvious. And lastly, the Piper file runner. This is what is fed a Piper file and executes that pipeline. Okay, so I promised contacts and more information. Here you go. You can write to the development list. You can write to a user's list. Uh, all questions are fair questions. Nothing is too simple. Go for it. The CTAKES website is ctakes.apache.org. Um, there is some interesting content there. I have to say that it's going to be reworked very soon. If anyone out there is an HTML expert or other you know, web framework expert, Please contact me if you'd like to help the rebuilding of this website. All right. And the last but not least, the wiki for CTEX has a lot of the information on how to do things, what things look like, um, some questions and answers, et cetera. OK. So I think I still have some time for questions and comments. Uh, Gandhi. Do you want to take over here? Uh -oh. And I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do at this point. Okay, uh, so I guess this is the easiest thing to do. Sample code. The Apache CTAKES repository, uh, if you go to ctakes.apache.org, our main website, 
uh, you should be able to navigate to something that basically says download and you can download binary installations that are pre-built or you, it shows you uh, where you can check out using Subversion the actual source code. Now the source code, you can use basically anything in there as an example, but a lot of things are not necessarily complemented, but involved. So we have made a module named CTAKES examples, and that should be not only self-explanatory in its name, but hopefully the contents. Are there any other questions? Wow, you're an easy audience. Yes, OK, uh, this is a good comment. Don't I want to mention that all the wonderful analysis engines are already built? Yes, OK. So the ApacheCon demo collection reader that we created uh, is really kind of a goofy thing. And normally, you will not need to utilize it. Um, Instead, you will use something that's called the file tree reader, and it will you know, load in a tree of files and do everything for you. Um, in my next presentation, I am going to show you some um, analysis engines that exist that are not commonly used, but do some really interesting things. Uh, but there is what we call the default clinical pipeline. And this performs most of the tasks that uh, people want to see done with their documents. And if you look at the Piper file for that default clinical pipeline, it will indicate all of the uh, analysis engines that perform important work. And then you can look at those classes to see, you know, how they're put together, et cetera. OK, next question. Uh, is CTAKES a good fit for analyzing clinical trial data? I would say it's a wonderful fit. Uh, in fact, that's pretty much what it's built for. It is not really meant to be used um, at the bedside, uh, but instead uh, for research. OK, uh, yes, here's a question further up in the chat that I couldn't see. Where does the natural language part come in? I am not really sure what that question means, but the natural language processing is basically taking something that is unstructured. In other words, you know, structured information is going to be in a table or a list or something that the computer or a computer tool can easily understand. Uh, the natural language is basically what you create when you write an email or um, you know, what you see when you read a book, or in this case, clinical natural language processing deals with what you would read in a clinical document. And a lot of our machine language uh, trained library or models are trained on clinical text and clinical text is not necessarily the same thing uh, that you would read in say the new york times um, so it needs to be treated differently okay uh where's the natural language part come in as in sentence structure and parts of speech okay so um 
I'll give you the parts of speech because that's the easiest. When you use the dictionary lookup module, which finds the procedures and anatomical sites, et cetera, within a clinical document, it identifies those and tags them with uh, the concept unique identifiers. It is assisted in its identification of these synonyms by the parts of speech of the words or tokens within those synonyms. I hope that makes sense. If not, post in the um, window and I'll try to get some more into that. How are we on time? Ah, okay, Uima version three. I, being as lazy as I am, have not actually looked at this beyond a little bit of documentation. However, one of my colleagues has, and I think he's used it a little bit, and he's told me that it is much faster and easier to use than the version that uh, is currently the framework for CTICs. There are not plans to upgrade right now. However, uh, CTICs is open source, as is obvious by its presence in this Apache conference. And if anyone wants to take this upon themselves or put together a group to do it, or you know, even just push, push, push for it on one of the dev lists or the wiki or what um, bug lists, then we can push it up in priorities and you know, see what happens. Ah, okay. Are there any plans to support a JDK beyond eight? So yes, right now, uh, CTEX uses Java eight. Uh, and I don't know if anyone here kind of follows the Oracle Java universe, but they moved from releasing versions of Java when there were uh, major stable changes in the JVM to a model where they release it every six months. And within this six month uh, release cycle, they have made a habit of putting in modifications that really break a lot of code that worked with Java 8. And as you can imagine, constantly upgrading your own code to work with Java 9, Java 10, Java 11, Java 12, every six months uh, requires practically full-time effort. And I don't think that we've really got that available right now. So uh, will we grab a version in the future that seems to require few uh, modifications to work with it from Java 8. We might upgrade, put that together and say, OK, now it works with you know Java 826. Everyone should update to that. Otherwise, I think Java 8 still is pretty standard among Java applications. So I'm not too worried about being left behind in the dust. <laughs> okay, well put. 
do we have plans to dockerize CTAKES engine so that someone can just run the container by simply pulling it as and setting it up is a Herculean task for many. Okay, yes, this is definitely true. Uh, setting up CTAKES and setting up a pipeline, if you're not really familiar with it, is difficult. Uh, I have to admit, when I first started working with CTAKES, it took me about two months to finally get it installed and running on my machine. And that's unfriendly. Okay, a Docker container. Um, I think we have a talk about a REST module in CTAKES that actually has a Docker inside it, a Docker file. Uh, there is also a little installation tool that I will be speaking about in another uh, presentation called Dockhand. And Dockhand will create a Docker file for um, running CTAKES elsewhere and or in a Docker container. And it will also alternatively install CTAKES in its binary form locally, or you can copy it elsewhere. It doesn't matter. Uh, for each of these, it will allow you to create a simple pipeline just by clicking on a series of checkboxes. Again, I will be showing this in another presentation. Stay tuned. Ah, so here's a comment and a suggestion, and probably a good one. Uh, maybe at least, and this goes back to the support for anything beyond Java 8, maybe at least support each LTS release of Java. Good idea. Again, updating Java so it works, um, or updating CTAKES so it works, would need to be done by someone. <laughs> We're open source. Anyone is welcome to put forth the effort. Uh, if you want it to be done, again, like everything else, push for it on the dev list, uh, or you know, hopefully do it yourself or grab a bunch of people that can do it. Okay, um, I think my 40 minutes is actually up. Yes, Kandir Rajan has just informed me of much. So uh, I believe our next talk will be coming up soon. And uh, Gandhi, thank you again for moderating this and collecting and vetting all the questions. Um, you're off the hook. Ah, okay. Last one. As a member of the UEMA project team, if you could wish for something from the UEMA team, what would it be? Oh, good Lord. Uh, I think the first thing would be run through our code and tell us what could be done to quickly and easily upgrade to UEMA 3. Um, you know, that would be fantastic for anyone that knows the ins and outs of UEMA to do for us. But really, anything you want to do, anything you are willing to do, I would be more than grateful, as would everyone else in the CTEX community, I'm sure. Okay, uh, I'm going to give it up. Thank you, everyone. And I hope this was informative. Bye.